Good morning, dear friends. This is Bishop John Quinn of the Diocese of Winona, Rochester, and I welcome you to this televised liturgy. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. My brothers and sisters, as we gather on this beautiful morning, we take a moment to acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Let us ask for the Lord's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father where you intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler in God, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days the Lord said, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so great that I must come down and see whether or not their actions fully correspond to the cry against them that comes to me. I mean to find out. While Abraham's visitors walked on farther toward Sodom, the Lord remained standing before Abraham. Then Abraham drew nearer and said, Will you sweep away the innocent with the guilty? Suppose there were 50 innocent people in the city. Would you wipe out the place rather than spare it for the sake of the 50 innocent people within it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to make the innocent die with the guilty, so that the innocent and the guilty would be treated alike. Should not the judge of all the world act with justice? The Lord replied, If I find 50 innocent people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham spoke up again. See how I am presuming to speak with my Lord, though I am but dust and ashes. What if there are five less than fifty innocent people? Will you destroy the whole city because of those five? He answered, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. But Abraham persisted, saying, What if only forty are found there? He replied, I will forbear at doing it for the sake of the forty. Then Abraham said, Let not my Lord grow impatient if I go on. What if only thirty are found there? He replied, 
I will forbear doing it if I can find thirty there. Still Abraham went on, Since I have thus dared to speak to my Lord, what if there were no more than twenty? The Lord answered, I will not destroy it for the sake of the twenty. But still he persisted, Please let not my Lord grow angry if I speak up this last time. What if there are at least ten there? He replied, For the sake of those ten, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. Because of your kindness and your truth, for you have made great above all things your name and your promise. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. The Lord is exalted, yet the lowly he sees, and the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk amid distress, you preserve me. Against the anger of my enemies, you raise your hand. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. Your right hand saves me. The Lord will complete what he has done for me. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you were buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And even when you were dead in transgressions and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he brought you to life along with him, having forgiven all of us our transgressions, obliterating the bond against us with its legal claims, which opposed us. He also removed it from our midst, nailing it to the cross. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us, and do not subject us to the final test. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend to whom he goes at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey, and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply from within, Do not bother me, the door has already been locked, and my children and I are already in bed. I cannot get up to give you anything. I tell you, if he does not give, get up to give the visitor the loaves because of their friendship, He will get up to give him whatever he needs because of his persistence. And I tell you, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks the door will be opened. What father among you would hand his son a snake when he asks for a fish, or hand him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? If you then, who are wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord.
It worked, not only once, but five times. The persistence of Abraham. Abraham kept asking, I love to negotiate, to bargain, to make a deal. I would have kept going at least to five innocent people. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open. But there seems to be a problem with this because I have asked and knocked many times for things, health, miracles, lost articles, donations, greater holiness for others and myself. Either problem is with me or it's with God, and I venture to guess it's with me. Much of what is on my list, I would guess, as is on yours as well, is to make my life easier, more enjoyable, comfortable, to have less pain, loss, or death. By and large, it's good. But I don't think often what we're asking for is God's will. It's not about God when it comes down to it. Fundamentally, we all forget that we are on a journey, a journey through this life, a pilgrimage, and that this life is not paradise that was lost by Adam and Eve. There's always going to be suffering and pain and trials and challenges in our life. There's going to be loss, and there's always death. We don't know on this pilgrimage if it's going to be long or brief. What we know or should know is that it's a journey towards God and that God is in charge of the journey. For he wants us all in heaven with him for all eternity. Along the way, we need to embrace our poverty because in reality, we're all poor. Everything we have is gift from God and we need to trust and rely on him, not ourselves, not the control we want to bring the comfort to the pleasure, but trust in God in all things along this journey that he is with us. The greatest thing we can do is trust in God and that he loves us and wants for us what is best. And that's ultimately to bring us home to heaven, not to give us comfort in this life. No, the problem is not with God, but with you and me. Behind my prayers, so much of my asking, my knocking, is my own fear. Rather, I need to trust in God, to pray as he taught us, which begins with our Father, a loving Father, who wants to give us all we need when we are dependent children. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Heaven, everything is perfect in God's order. That's what we should want on this earth, God's order and a life centered in him. Let us pray, let us trust, and then let us be persistent in our asking and our knocking. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And let us turn to our loving God with our prayers. We turn with great humility, but trusting that he hears us calling. For the church, that we may recognize the voice of the Lord in our lives, distinguish it from many other sounds which demand our time and attention, and follow the invitations of Jesus to a fuller life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For freedom from fear, that we may rely on the Spirit's strength as we face challenges and negative messages in our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase for vocations to the priesthood, for the sake of the sacramental life of the Church, particularly the Eucharist, that our young men may respond generously and courageously to God's call. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, particularly family members and friends, that they may experience the love of the Good Shepherd and join the great multitude of holy ones rejoicing in God's presence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, and loving Father, we humbly ask you to hear our prayers and to know those in our hearts and those of all of our loved ones. Father, please answer them according to your will. But Lord, give us the desire, the strength we need to live your will and not our own as we make this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us our bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands that will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Then once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, with St. Augustine, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Thanks be to God. Sing about the Lord's goodness, Father of all wisdom. Come to him and bless his name. Mercy he has shown us, his love is forever, faithful to the end of day. Sing of the nations, sing of the Lord's glory, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Ring out the Lord's glory, praise Him with your music, worship Him and bless His name. Power He has wielded, honor is His garment, risen from the snares of death. His word he has spoken, one bread he has broken, new life he now gives to all. Come then, all you nations, sing of your Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Ring out the Lord's glory, praise him with your music. Thank you for joining us for this Sunday's televised Mass. I hope it has brought you spiritual joy and comfort this day. If this Mass has helped you or someone you know, please consider sending a donation to the address on the screen or by visiting our website at dowr.org and clicking the weekly Mass icon. Thank you and God bless.